Hi everybody. So today we are going to go through standards for metadata. There are a lot of them out there and I'm going to show you an interface where you can actually browse for some of these. If you're not familiar with them, you can kind of see how people are using them and who's using them. Then we're going to go through the three that I like the most for just general metadata. As we go through this series, we are going to be getting into more specific uh, schema for specific use cases. But for today, we're going to go through if you want to create an item and it's metadata, how would you go about doing that? All right, so let's go get started. OK, so this is the linked open vocabularies. Uh, interface, I would really recommend going and exploring this a little bit more. Keep in mind, vocabularies is kind of a broad statement when we're talking about information architecture. In this capacity, linked open vocabularies is really talking about the schema or the metadata fields to then describe the things that you're putting in those fields. The reason that you want to look at the standards and not just make one up on your own is now there's a time and a place for making a schema up on your own that's really going to tailor itself to your specific needs. The problem with that is you miss out on that collaboration where the rest of the community might be uh, expanding upon a vocabulary. You will also miss out on any kind of validations. If you're using specific kind of kinds of tools, it might not accept the custom schema that you have. So there are some drawbacks for having your own custom schema. I'm a big believer in standards and then expanding when you need to based on that standard. So here we're going to look at this really beautiful visual that they have. And this is talking, sh basically showing what are the most used schema out there. And so you'll see DC terms, DCE are the biggest. Again, that is a Dublin core. We're going to go over that in this video. There's also FOF, which is friend of a friend. We will have a whole video dedicated to that. SCOS, another one. We are going to have a whole video dedicated to that because they're very important for very specific use cases. This video is talking about general metadata uh, schema to use. For instance, if you have a product and you need to describe that product or an item like a, a document in your own institutional repository or in your you know, corporate repository. So your intranet, for instance. So just wanted to expose you guys to this. Um, the other thing that I really love is you can go to terms and you can just type in something that you're looking for if you're not familiar with it. So let's say I'm looking for something to describe a, a director. So I type in direct and I can see director is something that exists. So let's go ahead and check that out. And here you can see all of the different vocabularies. And that's this first part of the link here. That's called the namespace. It's basically describing the schema that it comes from. And you can see a bunch of different ones that are in here. Um, so you can go in and check these out and see if they're fitting your needs. So before we go into any more, I want to just preface that um, subscribing to the channel is very helpful for me. It makes sure that you can see my videos as they come out so I don't have to, you know, wrangle people up. Um, so if you are really enjoying these, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You won't get anything, you know, spam wise. It's just anytime a video gets posted, you'll get a notification. Uh, so with that, let's go check out some things here about schema. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a meta tag. So that's not necessarily a schema, but it's kind of like the old school way of putting tags behind your web pages to have Google and other search engines pick up on what you are searching for. So these are mostly HTML based. Again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with these, but I'm going to show you a better schema to use and I'll tell you why. So that would be schema.org. So you can go to this website, you can go ahead and type in anything. So if you were looking for an author or let's say you were looking for description, you can go ahead and search for description and it'll tell you all the different places that you can find description. So let's go back to author. All right, so the reason that schema.org is better than meta tags is a lot of people don't realize this, first of all. So you're going to get a cut above your competition if you use them. The other thing is all of the major search engines out in the world, 
um, including the ones from China and the ones from uh, Russia, including the ones that we all know in the US, like Google and Yahoo and Bing, they all mysteriously got along for one beautiful moment and they created schema.org. And the reason for that is if you use these tags on your web pages behind the scenes, Google will like you better. So that's always a good thing when your stuff gets shot to the top because you're using the right schema. So here, what you would use is, see, this is a book series example. Let's look at Jason LD. And you can see how schema.org is being called out. And you can see how this is being used for author. So author type, see? And the reason that it knows that author means what it does is because we've already called out that it's coming from schema.org. So JSON LD, RDFA, those are what are called serializations. I just call them formats. So if you put something into JSON LD or JSON or XML, these are all just like markup languages um, and, and formats. So that's all that means. You can put things into Turtle. We're gonna have a whole video on that. So this is just showing you how to use this schema, which is really great. That's what the standards help you with is understanding how to use this so that you're using it in the same way that everybody else is. And you get the benefits when people expand these schema. So as I said, all of the other search engines created schema.org. So you will definitely benefit from using schema.org over meta tags or nothing at all. What this means is when Google is indexing all of your web pages, it will understand your stuff a little bit better. And then you have a better chance of being on that coveted first search results page. And we're going to go into more SEO later in the series, but this is a good starting point. Very good starting point. So now let's move into more also are used in humanities, like for archives or for document repositories. So one that is very popular is uh, DCMI, which is Dublin Core. Uh, this was created um, a while ago, but it is very, very well respected. They actually have a great conference um, if you guys can attend that. Um, and so what you are seeing here is here's the list of terms. So let's say I need to describe an abstract. So let's go ahead and click on abstract and it's telling you what the URI is. More on that to come. It's basically the unique identification so that anybody in the world knows what you mean when you put this in. It's telling you what the label is, which is abstract. It's telling you what the definition is, a summary of the resource, and then it tells you how to actually support this. This is great. This is why standards are so important is it gives you lots and lots of FAQs and examples to look at and a lot of guidance. So if you are just getting familiar with information architecture, these are the places to really study and understand how people are using these things. Another one that's similar to DCMI or Dublin Core is Europeana. So this one is something that is um, a data model used for describing mostly like archival or pri what's called primary documents. So let's say um, you have Galileo's book where he shows the spots on the sun, the official real one that Galileo made. You would wanna describe things like that with Europeana. You can use it for a lot of other things though that are any kind of assets. So images, videos, documents, you can record all of those in this data model. So the primer, a lot of documentation is here, but let's go look at the standard itself. So here you'll see like a property name. So it's telling you the year property name is EDM, which is the namespace where it's coming from. And then it tells you year. And so here's the URI again. Again, this is just pointing anywhere in the web where this shows up. This is where the, the link would resolve so you know what it means. It tells you what the label is, gives you a definition. So here's something interesting. It's a sub-property of DC terms. Didn't we just look at DC? We did, Dublin Core. So this is showing that you can actually mix and match the terms from different schema. As long as you indicate at the top of your data structure, usually called the header, um, or the meta section, if you're in XML, as long as you're pointing to the schema that you're using, 
these all will resolve. So if you had DC and then you had um, Europeana as as your URIs in um, in that section, anytime you have any of these URIs for specific terms, it will resolve and understand what you're talking about. And what is it? It in this context is a search engine, any kind of search engine, whether it's Google or your own internal repository. These are really important. We're going to have a whole video on URIs, but they are incredibly important. Can I say that again? Unique identifiers are incredibly important. If you don't do this, you really are going to struggle. So keep these in mind. So now I'm going to go into more of a controversial one. This next one called JATS is not necessarily a metadata schema. It is more along the lines of a, um, a document tagging schema. So what does that mean? So all of these things so far have been about the metadata about an asset or a document. This one is talking about, well, what if I want to know all the stuff in that document? If it's a Word document, um, you even have headers in, in a Word document. Um, the other example that I use is XML. JATS is really XML based. Again, XML is just a format, just like a Word document has dot doc as as its file format or if you save something in excel you can save it as, as an excel document or a csv document so these are just file formats so jats is specifically for tagging where a header is or where um, descriptions are or images in an actual document we will have a whole video on that as well but right now i want to talk about i've actually used jats as a metadata schema as well. So you have this version, which is the, the publishing version. And then you also have this version, which is for the archiving and interchange. So this one is a little bit more robust. It's more um, specific, uh, but you can use either of these. And what I did is I actually used this and converted it into, instead of XML, I converted it to JSON-LD. Again, it's another file format. And it is an object-oriented language. So we'll get into what that means in a second. But I actually think this is so rich and complex for metadata that it really allows you to get into very specific, minute pieces of information. So remember the last video card up top where we talked about the more specific and the more explicit you can be with your metadata, the better off your filters will be and your search will be. Well, JATS allows you to break down an, uh, an author's name or a, uh, a creator's name by first name and last name, but also what language is their name in, which is really important, especially when you're talking about languages that are not um, from the Roman languages. So. This one's really cool. If you're not familiar with it, it's pretty popular in um, the publishing world, um, like scholarly publishing, but I would really recommend going and checking it out. And all of these standards are great because you can go in and you can search for something. So like author, you can see I type in author. I can see all these different things about authors. I, t I click on that. It tells me what it's all about and it gives me an example on how to use it. This is why standards for schema are so incredibly important, especially when you're starting out because it really helps you understand how to use them. So there are a lot of other kinds of schema out there, but this was just a deep dive into the um, general ones to get you started. So with that, let's head back over. All right, so that was a whirlwind through some of the big standards that are out there for some of the most well-known and most used uh, metadata schema again for a general description of an asset of any sort later videos we're going to go through more specific schema and your task for this week is really just to go through those schema standards that i mentioned in this video i'm going to put those in the uh, description below so you can go and check those out and do you have a favorite schema i much prefer jets mostly because that's the first one I ever learned, uh, but there's a lot of really great ones out there. Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, 
I want to thank you for watching this video. Again, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.